Carlson with the conclusion of my interview with Attorney General William Barr. Have a great night, everybody. Tucker Carlson up next in Washington, D.C. Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. You know the feeling you have after some momentous, life-changing event? The birth of a child or a funeral or some unexpected medical diagnosis. Those are the moments that define your life, of course. And so you wake up the next morning and you realize nothing will ever be the same. Well, that was definitely not the feeling you probably had this morning. They impeached the president last night and, if we're being honest, it didn't really make any difference. Despite weeks of loud and urgent noises gleefully amplified by the mouth breathers on cable television, the votes last night came and went, and then, drumroll please, nothing changed. We didn't learn anything. Nobody grew. Democrats seemed almost theatrically insincere when they began this process some weeks ago, and then by yesterday, they were every bit as fraudulent. So I solemnly and sadly opened the debate on the impeachment of the President of the United States. It's with profound sadness that I stand here today in support of these articles of impeachment. I'm saddened that we're here today. Sir, I come to impeachment with deep sadness. I rise on a sad day for America, a sad day for Texas, and a very sad day for the people I represent. This is a sad day for our country and for our democracy. This is indeed a sad day for our country. This is a very sad day. Madam Speaker, this is a sad day in U.S. history. I have to say that this is a sad day. This is a sad day. It is not a day of joy. <laughs> now, you can mock the mindless conformity of what you just saw, but honestly, you've got to admire the discipline that a moment like that must have required. These are people, by and large, with disorganized and chaotic personal lives. That's why they're leftists in the first place, because they're deeply unhappy. They don't make their beds, they hate their dads. But when it comes to political talking points, suddenly they're Germanic in their efficiency. For a moment last night, though, the mask slipped. When the impeachment resolution finally passed, onlookers began to cheer. Pelosi had to remind them to shut up. The yeas are 230. The nays are 197, present is 1, Article 1 is adopted. Yeah, it's nay on the earring chain. <laughs> the Washington Post had trouble with that message too. They just couldn't keep a straight face after last night's vote went through. The newspaper's congressional reporting team, air quotes around all of that, went out to dinner to celebrate what they called Merry Impeachmas. It's the one holiday they celebrate. The Post tweeted about it, but later deleted the tweet. Apparently it wasn't solemn enough, Pelosi's orders. By this morning, though, the embargo on authentic emotion had finally ended. The mission had been accomplished, and Democrats were finally allowed to break character and be themselves, if only briefly. So they were. Actually, they conceded impeachment was awesome. Pelosi herself set the new tone. Watch. We've been hearing from people all over the country in the last, since last night and this morning. Seems like people have a spring in their step. Wow. So that's not what we were told, but, you know, things change. It turns out impeachment isn't a sad event. It's not solemn. No. It's a pinata party. It's a cause for celebration. And by the way, don't worry. It was never about saving the republic or preserving the constitution or any of that heavy stuff we told you before. Those long speeches about the framers? Just kidding, say Democrats. Impeachment was never about removing the president. No. It was always just a prank. It was the political equivalent of a flaming bag of dog bombs on the country's front steps. We made our point, Democrats are saying. We don't need to continue. Seriously, that's what they're saying. That's the new talking point. It's hard to believe, but the tape doesn't lie. Senior Democrats are now telling us they may not even pass articles of impeachment onto the Senate. In fact, no less a figure than House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn is urging Democrats, brace yourselves, to let impeachment die. Watch this. Are you suggesting it's possible you will never transmit the article of impeachment? If it were me, yes, that's what I'm saying. I have no idea 
uh, what the speaker will do. Uh, but if you have a preordained outcome that's negative uh, to your actions, why walk into it? I'd much rather uh, not um, uh, take that chance. Huh. So after three years of nonstop screeching about the moral necessity of impeachment, and by the way, the left specializes in screeching about moral necessities, but now they're telling us they don't really want impeachment. Are you confused? Well, that's only because you don't think like a leftist. To interpret what's actually happening in Washington, we're joined by a legitimate expert on the ways of the city, someone who has learned this through suffering. Jeff Sessions spent decades in the United States Senate before becoming the country's attorney general. He's now running for Senate once again from the state of Alabama, from which he joins us tonight. Senator, thanks so much for coming on. What do you make of this? Why, how, why are Democrats suddenly telling us, after all these years, that they don't want to pass the articles on to the Senate? One reason may well be, Tucker, that uh, they can imagine what it's going to be like on the floor of the Senate. Uh, 